Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at Boyle's law and how it relates to the PV diagram. What do we mean by the PV diagram? Well, the PV diagram is a diagram that has pressure on the vertical axis and volume on the horizontal axis. Here we have a diagram with pressure and volume, and then we have these curved lines on here which are called isotherms. Well, where did that come from? Well, let's go back over here and look at our gas equation, the ideal gas equation, PV equals nRT. And of course, with Boyle's law, we let T equals constant, so therefore the process is isothermic, which means that we can write PV equals nRT as P is equal to a constant divided by V. Because if T is constant, we know R is constant, we keep the number of moles constant, so the product of P times V equals a constant. And then, if we write V down in the denominator, we can write P equals a constant divided by V. Now, with Boyle's law, we also know that because of that, P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. The product of the pressure times the volume in state 1 must equal the product of the pressure times the volume in state 2, which means if the pressure goes up, volume must go down. So when we come over here and we look at these isotherms, and we'll see in a moment what that all means, is that let's say we're in a particular state right here where we have a certain pressure right here and a certain volume right there. If then we change the state by increasing the pressure, notice that will require the volume to decrease because after all, the product of P times V must remain a constant. So when we reduce the volume, the pressure increases, when we increase the volume, the pressure decreases in such a way that the product of those two will always remain constant. But that will be the case along any one of these lines. Well, where did these lines come from? These are called isotherms, lines that represent a constant temperature. So nR times T can be a different constant. When T becomes larger, this constant becomes larger. When T becomes smaller, this constant becomes smaller. As long as it remains constant in going from one state to another state, we have what we call an isothermic process. Now to relate that, we can do that to the y, the xy axis. If we change this equation to this equation, notice we have y equals some constant divided by x. And here we have an xy axis that describes that very same situation. We know that when x becomes larger, y becomes smaller. As x becomes larger, y becomes smaller along these particular lines. And these lines are determined by the size of that constant. If we have a larger constant, the line will be higher up like this. With a smaller constant, the line will be down in this direction. So for the same reason, we realize now that the constant becomes larger up here and smaller down here. And what determines the size of the constant is the value for T, the temperature which means that on a diagram like this, the isotherms in this direction means higher temperature and the lines in this direction represent lower temperature. So now we can see here that these isotherms simply represent constant temperatures, but the higher up you go, the higher the temperature, the lower you go, the lower the temperature. So this PV diagram drawn as such with volume on the horizontal axis and pressure on the vertical axis represents how it can visually or graphically represent a change of state keeping the temperature constant. Why do we have to have different, different isotherms? It's because we can have a different temperature that remains constant going from state 1 to state 2 and therefore we have to have different representations on the PV diagram. That's where that came from and hopefully that will help us understand later when we start working with different processes and how we then go from one state to another, keeping the temperature constant. That's how it's done.